Appalachians that would exist if we go back to colonial times or going back past the Appalachian Mountains. No, you know, you can't go in a, in a stagecoach unless it's been cleared by the Transportation Department to be safe, to, safe and effective going across the Missouri River. You know, Lewis and Clark would have never even got close to the West Coast. And, the, and, the same, and no one reads history books and finds that there are all sorts of dead bodies on the uh, on the, the trails out there because they didn't know how to drive a, a Conestoga wagon or things of that sort. I'm sure that there were accidents, but there are accidents all the time. No, the and, contrary, people were a lot tougher and, and, and wilier, and that's what built this country. Shifting gears before we go to some phone calls uh, here, Bruce, but it's in a similar area. Government is moving towards capital controls. Yeah, you know about the legislation where the IRS will take your passport, no judge, no jury. Uh, as a constitutional lawyer, I, 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 I would like you to speak to that. I know I've seen some Supreme Court rulings saying you can't take somebody's passport. That's something uh, that uh, you have to basically give up yourself unless you're out on bond or something. So break that down. And how does that tie into 10th Amendment, 9th Amendment, 4th Amendment, out of their jurisdiction, now TSA is all over the highways where I live, searching people randomly. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Well, first, with regard to the passport, I mean, we need to distinguish passport from citizenship here. You're absolutely right, uh, Alex, that the U.S. Supreme Court held in a case called the Froyum against Rusk in 1967 that the government is powerless to strip you of your citizenship. You know, it can do a lot of things to you, but... You know, unless you voluntarily renounce it, or actually sign a paper saying, I renounce my citizenship, the government cannot uh, strip you of citizenship. But a passport is different than citizen. Uh, and, but the Supreme Court has said you can't deny passports based upon your, your, your political beliefs. There's a case called Samuel versus Rusk. You know, the, the government cannot be arbitrary in deciding whether or not I have a passport that enables or certainly facilitates your travel. And now you want to say, well, okay, if the IRS says you owe them $5 in taxes, then they want to prevent you from getting a passport. I mean, that's something, of course, that Congress could, could stop in a, in a, in a moment. Uh, and they should stop in a moment if the IRS is, is considering that. It's just a way of, of leverage for the IRS to try to claim taxes that have not been adjudicated, that they've just levied. And, and decided upon unilaterally. It's not like so. It's an extrajudicial uh, Stalinistic power grab, from my view. Is that correct? Yeah, and in and, and some sense, Alex, it's unfortunately not limited just to passports. The IRS laws really authorize them in the case they call jeopardy assessments. If they make up their own mind to think they need to levy you know, a huge tax on you, it would, you know, without informing you because they think you'll make an escape. And they do that, and it's with no due process at all. You're, you can be shut down overnight with an IRS left now. And, and that's something, to me, that's quite dangerous. The U.S. Supreme Court has upheld it in special circumstances where somebody was trying to flee a jurisdiction, but I think that it's, it's vastly too great a power to entrust well, it just shows, any government authority. Sure, sure, let me ask this way. Why are we seeing, and tell us if you agree, just a wild dash to power grab on every front, dwarfing anything I've ever seen. Why is it moving so fast? It's, it's, I think it's, it's Alex, a deep seated in, in the change of our culture to one where liberty is the primary earmark, earmark and value in society, to one where autom we automatically, because of 9 11 and the government making us think that we're about ready to be overtaken every five seconds, the government making us fearful that our whole culture has accepted, rather like a docile cow, if you will, all these claim intrusions in order to make us safe. And you, know, you just, if you, I, I would wager, Alex, if you took the political dialogue today and counted how many times the word safe was used as opposed to liberty, now safe would outnumber liberty probably 10 to 1. I'm saying this is the earmark of what I call a, a psychology of empire, where everything is instantly subordinated to, oh, but it'll make you safer, oh, it'll make you safer, and therefore you just stop it. And, 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 and we don't have any leaders who will stand up and wait a minute, we can't make you absolutely safe without destroying your liberty. Sure, and who keeps me safe from from the big government? 
Yeah, exactly. You need to be safe from government because you're absolutely right. All the greatest horrors in the world are always perpetrated by government because they do generally have monopoly of the power, the taxes, the coercion, the courts, the military. So in between the possible danger of a private organization or a private individual and the government, the government is always the one that you've got to have special you know, uh, safeguards and, and suspicion against. Because all history shows how much more potent it is in in extinguishing in extinguishing liberty. Sure. Uh, I, I want to spend some time on Ron Paul, but we're almost out of time. We'll do that right at the end to get your take on uh, the fact that, in my view, the campaign's already won by injecting real ideas and what's going to happen with all those delegates. And if you've got any inside baseball on how they plan on using them or. Uh, where all that's going to go, Bruce Fine, Chief uh, Policy Advisor to Congressman Ron Paul, is our guest. Uh, but right now, let's go to some phone calls. Dr. B, Sandy, Chris, and others, 800-259-9231 for Bruce Fine. Dr. B in Georgia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, sir, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to speak to both of you. Uh, you've been on a national level. I'd like to bring it down to a local level as it relates to Agenda 21. And I, I've heard I've heard Alex you speak about Agenda 21. I've, I've read Rosa Corey's book, but they're missing part of the puzzle. How are they advancing Agenda 21 on the local level? They're doing that through what are called regional commissions or regional development commissions. This law that you mentioned that they're passing in Arizona uh, to stop you in Agenda 21 is basically worthless because their version of the regional commissions are called the Council of Governments, and that law addresses nothing. These groups get 45% of their money through the feds, through block grants. The granddaddy, you mentioned uh, DHS and DOD, but the granddaddy is HUD. No, no, I agree with you. This federal planning, federal following international treaties, the point is they're stating language to block the implementation of the of the different sets of the treaty, and it's a beginning as in, in, in Houston, they're trying to take people's property for environmental reasons, and the city council has a member trying to block it. My point is, at least people are waking up, at least we're seeing a movement towards recognizing the UN is trying to circumvent Congress, like Obama is circumventing Congress with these regulations, just like the regulation to stop chores I mean, I understand that things aren't perfect, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Bruce, what's your take on all these U.N. treaties they're trying to get cities to implement just by fiat? I think that we need Congress, and it has this authority, to say that no treaty of the United States shall have any um, effect inside the United States unless Congress authorizes the same. That is, treaties do not need to be self-executing. And that's what the U.S. Supreme Court has held in a in different circumstance relating to an effort by the then President Bush to force Texas to abandon the death penalty as applied to a, a Mexican who wasn't told of his right to have access to a consular authority once he was arrested. There's no, this treaty, the international world, the, the world court, didn't, its judgment sure. were not self-executing and Congress hadn't authorized it. And again, so we can trace back all these abuses the, what I call the virtual inertness of Congress. Do something. They can make it clear. No treaty has any impact on the internal regulation of the United States. Exactly, no but it's worse. Authorized. Sure, just to be clear, though, with Copenhagen, we didn't even ratify it, and Obama is implementing provisions of it through the executive. Uh, it, it's outrageous. What do you do about that? Well, let's say it's if the Congress can do use the appropriations power and split foot. No monies of the United States shall be expended in order to implement anything with regard to these very Kyoto treaties or international treaties or whatever. So there's no money to do it. Sure. You can cut it off. Sure. Let and me they, tell. They, listen, I, and, and Alex, listen, I've gone up there. I, you give me one minute, I can draft a statute that'll do the work. It's just that Congress right now doesn't have the political will, and we need the American people to write into those members all to say, I'm not voting for you unless you do this. And you got to make it almost uh, a litmus test. I agree with you. Listen, Dr. B, you sound like an informed person. I actually know what you were saying is true about these commissions and things, these regional governments that are totally unconstitutional. Why don't you write an article? and send it to writers at InfoWars.com, and if it's of quality, and I look at it, 
and, and it, you know, it has little links in a bibliography, we will post it on InfoWars.com. So I agree with you. We could we could do a better job explaining this. Why don't you get that written and uh, over to us, okay? I would be happy to do it, but before I ring off, I have one question for Mr. Fine. Fire it now. He'll answer it after the break. Okay, this regional commission has now uh, gotten the state legislature to pass HB 277. It's a Transportation Investment Act. It's a T-splost. Yeah, I don't think he can answer your question about some state law right now. We'll be back. Bruce, we were talking during the break, and you were making a point about Congress. Briefly do that, because it is important. Then I want to jam in a few more calls for you, please, sir. Our, our ailments with regard to big government and the uh, invasion of our privacy and our liberty can all be traced back to what I call the inertness of Congress. It has all of the constitutional authority needed in order to restore the republic from the grasp of empire and big government and all this vast spending. And we focus so much upon the president. And the fact is, the remedy is right in our hands. Post the people out who continue to vote for these huge, massive budgets. Permit the president to usurp constitutional powers, to claim the right to assassinate us, and do all sorts of other things that the founding fathers would have been shocked at. Uh, and, and once we change the complexion of Congress, and once we have an impeachment, the president will never do that again. Uh, and that's, that's, what, that's what has to sure. happen. And don't get our eyes off the ball. And that means you, you focus on your congressman, you have witness tests and say, we want you to act, you need to be And that's up to us. I mean, we saw with the Tea Party before it got taken over by the neocons and people, that we were having a real effect uh, at these town halls and things. It's up to us, the people, to take our Congress back. Uh, let's jam in a call. Sandy in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Go ahead. Two quick questions. Okay, when Obama took the oath to protect and serve or protect our Constitution and defend it, along with the, all the others that are trying to break it apart with him, aren't they just as guilty as he is? And number two, if our votes this November are taken from this country into Spain by another company or something to be counted, doesn't that make votes void? Yeah, there is a lot of uh, manipulation going on in the vote. It's not total, but it's 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 certainly there. I appreciate your call. What about those points, Bruce? Well, of course, yeah, those who are helping the president are committing impeachable offenses, too. I mean, I served in the government. I had an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, too. Indeed, at one time, I was seeking the impeachment and, and removal of my president at the time, Richard Nixon, for the Watergate crimes. And, so, and, and, and that's why the Constitution empowers Congress to impeach and remove not just the president, but any other officer of the United States, whether it's the Penn Department or in any other And the military has an oath to the Bill of Rights and Constitution, Declaration of Independence. Uh, they need to understand that as well and know what lawful orders are. Absolutely. In fact, the military, it's a time-honored rule. Uh, a, a knowing unlawful order must be disobeyed. Uh, and that's that, that's part of military. If Just they like order you to torture, one, if they order you to torture, you better say no, because those <laughs> that did it, they ended up being sent to prison. And then Bush wrote a book admitting he ordered it. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're exactly right. And the fact is, this is not novel. That we, in the aftermath of World War II, we tried lawyers, we tried it, judges, because they 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 did not disobey clearly illegal illegal orders from Adolf Hitler, and we sentenced them. We said that they were committing war crimes. Uh, so we have our own precedent at Nuremberg that should guide ourselves and restrain ourselves from ending up emulating all these other people. Well, empires. Bruce, people are waking up, but I, I think this is going to end badly. And I mean, in the final equation, uh, the, the the power structure is mad dog. I always thought that there was more structure to the corruption. And there certainly are some structures, but overall, it's a bunch of people out of control, power grabbing. And maybe that's our salvation is that the elites are fighting with each other and it'll be so badly organized, they won't be able to carry it through. But I think in the process, it's going to be pretty nasty. What do you say? Well, yes, but remember this, Alex, you know, there in some sense is no end. You know, the, 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 the world isn't going to stop. Countries have peaks and valleys, and this is what needs to be remembered, that every generation has to win liberty for themselves. You can't just sort of inherit it like you can inherit money. And once you lack that will as a people to defend courageously liberty and to stand up, uh, to the efforts of those that you described, the elite that wants to use their power. No, it's all over, and and you can't you, you can't give that you can't.
can't give it like you can give a house. You, you so. can't. Bruce Fine, thank you so much. Freedom isn't free.